Greetings and welcome to our ongoing program entitled Point 28, brought to you by Adventist World Radio. Today, we look at the story of creation. How did the world come into existence? Stay tuned and God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Father, we look at one of the most powerful fundamental beliefs. We ask that Father, please be with us, be with the speaker, we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. To our lovely friends out there, good morning, good evening to all of you. We praise God for this opportunity that He has given us to go back to His Scripture as the foundation of truth and our faith to our loving God. I'm inviting everyone to please bow your head for a word of prayer. Great and mighty God, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Speak to us this time. Put words into my mouth, dear Lord to share your love, your mercy, and grace to everyone. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last 2011, the people of Jamaica was shocked with this news of their athlete, Usain Bolt, my friend. 
He was a former Olympic gold medalist. But in 2011, he was disqualified. The fans that were, that were uh, there to witness him, they were really disappointed. You know what? Usain Bolt was really used to the policy of the, the Olympics. He knew very well. He knew the starting uh, gunshot. He knows the policy. But that time in Korea, when the Olympic was held over there, Usain Bolt, my friend, was disqualified and he was devastated of this decision because he knew very well everything, but because of a wrong start, he was disqualified. Tonight, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, crucial one. And it was, uh, there was a debate for a long time, for many years, and even a decade, and even a century, my friend. It's about creation. I would like to invite everyone, if you have your Bible with you, please, let's go back to the first book of the Bible, where the account of creation was written and was recorded. You know what? If you open your Bible... In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it stated, it was started with a proclamation, my friend. What is that? And even the children, even the young kids could memorize this one. It's a proclamation that there is a creator. There is a powerful God. It says here, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's a proclamation that we should let everyone know that there is a powerful God who creates everything you see, everything from the sky above and from here, and even you, my friend. It's a proclamation that there is one God who created these things, who created you and me. You know what? When I was in high school, we have this, guy, this professor or teacher in chemistry. He's very smart. He graduated in, in a prestigious school in uh, Mindanao State University. And we were really amazed of his knowledge. And every time we start with our topic, he says, Oh, he will just only give us one question every exam, major exam. And the uh, highest grade that we can have is only uh, uh, 85, no? Because his way is different. And he will always open this question that we were... Uh, existed because of the single cell for million years and it's really hard for us to understand my friend but now if you go back to the creation uh, the account of creation we will notice a very clear reminders or uh, story about creation that God has telling you and me you know what in verse verses 2 to 5 here Everything started. Maybe you're going to raise question. How did we exist? How did God create everything we see? How did God create you and me? Yes, we will continue our study in the account of creation in Genesis. 2 verse 2 to 5. It started with nothing. Verse 2, it says that the earth was formless. It was void, covered with darkness, my friend. And here comes, oh, the Holy Spirit was hovering the face of the earth. And God said, there will be light. Remember this one, my friend. God says, God said, there will be light. And there was light. And the light was called day and the night and the darkness was called night. God divided the one and it marks the first day of creation. I would like to quote this one in the last part, my friend. That there was evening and there was morning. That's the way how we count the days. You know what? When I was young, when there's a special celebration, we need to wait at 12 midnight to celebrate the special day for the next day. To midnight, we are counting for the other day. But it's very clear in the Bible, my friend, that from evening to morning, it means from sunset 
to sunset. That's how we're going to count the day. Yes, let's continue our study. In verse, verses 6 to 8, this is the second day. Oh, and God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the water. You know what, my friend? Firmament, when I checked the one in other uh, um, translation, it's expansion. So the, the expansion of the sky and the water. And there was evening and there was what? Morning, the second day of the account of creation. It marks the second day of creation. The sky that we see, wow, it was created on the second day, my friend. Let's continue. And then the third day comes. Then God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place. Oh, that's why when we go to the, the sea, it's a very uh, big body of water. We enjoy that one very much. And next, and God said, oh, we will also separate the water and the, the land, the earth. That was called the earth. And after that one, my friend, it's very clear in the Bible. The story really nice. I want you to, to imagine. Oh, there's water and the earth was separated. And God said, oh, there will be what? There will be herbs. There will be trees that will what? Bear fruits, bear seeds, and will multiply and replenish the earth, my friend. I remember the, the professor in my chemistry class in third year that he always asked this question. Oh, which comes first? The seed or the tree? You know what, my friend? Because we are really want to show that we are really good. So we're debating. Oh, no, it's seed first. No, it's the tree first. It's very clear in the account of creation. God is a loving God, my friend. You know what? He told us everything. It's here in the Bible. You know what? After the class, after the end of the year, that question was not answered by my professor. And even he added more. Which one? Which comes first? The egg or the chicken? <laughs> my friend, we were, divas uh, we were, what is that? We were more, uh, there's a chaos in the class because no one got the correct answer. If, you know what? If you search in Google, the BBC uh, producer still, he has the, he has the, he hasn't had the right answer for this question. But, my friend, God is inviting us to go back to the scripture. It's there. It's very clear that trees, the herbs that will bear fruits and seeds, God made it. Remember, everything God says and everything stood in the creation. That's the mark of the third day of creation. Let's continue. In verses 9 to 13, uh, 14 to 19. This is the time where when you look at the sky, you will be amazed. This is the moment that God created a greater light, with, which is the sun no, that governs the day. And God created the smaller lights that governs at night, which is the moon and the stars. We really enjoy. You know what? My friend came back from New Zealand. He said, oh, we were brought to a nice place. We paid a lot of money. It's so expensive. But when they were there, wow, they were amazed of the beautiful scenery of the sky. It seems that the sky is really close to them. They forgot how many dollars they paid. They forgot that it was very expensive because of this magnificent creation of our loving God. There are so many questions. Oh, where did the light came from on the first day? Because the sun and the moon and the stars were created on the fourth day. So if you have more questions and if you want to know more about it, please comment and message us, my friend. We can tell more about creation. And that's the mark. Oh, there was evening and morning. And that's the mark of the fourth day of creation. Everything was good, my friend. 
Everything God created was good. Every time, every, at the end of the day, everything He has made was good. What a perfect, what a loving and powerful God we have. And in verses 20 to 23, I know you love this. I love this. This is where the, our loving God created the birds in the sky, the colorful birds. You know what? Our neighbors has these love birds. Wow, it's so nice. They were playing. They have parrot. Wow, you, it's interesting. I visited one place. There's a parrot that talks and sings. Wow, I was amazed. And it directs me to our loving God, to our merciful creator. What a great and powerful God we have, my friend. And after that one, it continues. The account of creation. God created the fish in the sea. You know what? I always love to go to school. I always love to go to school early in the morning. But you know what, my friend? I don't attend the class. I went to our class to meet my classmates. And yes, we will go directly to the sea to do spear gun fishing. Wow! Spear gun fishing, my friend. If you try this one, if you can try this one, you will be really what? You will be really amazed. Oh, we stayed there from 7 o'clock until 3 o'clock in the afternoon without lunch. We enjoy the beauty of the corals under the sea and do fishing. It was really good. And God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Everything, my friend. God is a powerful and a magnificent God. Let's continue. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 to 27, my friend, this is the last, this is the sixth day. Wow, it's interesting. The first thing here, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, like cattle, elephant, there are some scholars and writers, they said, oh, maybe there's a dinosaur over there. Yes, maybe it was not recorded and we, we were not there. So maybe God created those uh, huge beasts in the forest. But I want to, to quote this uh, verse, my friend, in 27. It says here, then God said, let us make men. Let us make you, my friend. Let us make Daryl. Let us make men. In our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish that's our what our responsibility over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air you have a special responsibility why God created you and me my friend you know what have you noticed from verse 2 down to verses 26 of Genesis Everything God says, everything God had said, it, come, it came, my friend. But in verse 27, it's different. It says here that, oh, let make man in our own image. He didn't say, there will be a man. No, my friend. That's why verse 27 it's an account, it's a biblical text that you are special. I am special. We are special in the sight of God because we are created, we are molded by His likeness. And in the last part of the verse, I would like to read this one. Then God saw everything that He had made and indeed it was very good. It's, he didn't say it's good. He said it was very good. It means it's perfect in the other way around. Everything is perfect, my friend. Out of this accounts, creation accounts, God has three lovely reminders to all of us, my friend. The first one, 
the creation account, it reminds us that God is a powerful creator. That God is a God of order. And God, He is a God of provision. If you look back again, the creation account, what you can see is a powerful creator. You know what? When science tried to study, even just like the uh, one part of our body, even just our heart, they were amazed. They cannot really fathom. They cannot really understand how, how did, uh, how did a creator uh, make this one? It functions very well. The functions and everything, they were amazed, my friend. That's why God is reminding us that there is a powerful creator. Why? Because we human beings, you, my friend, prone, instead of worshiping the creator, we worship the creation. It's sad to know, really, God is really sad that instead of worshiping our loving and powerful creator, we worship the creation. You know what? When we had our first car, we were so excited and we praised the Lord. I said, Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for this car. Oh, it's new. It's brand new. I haven't thought of having this one. So at first, we really praised God for that. But you know what? It took our attention. Because when we were in the church, we went to the other church and we were sitting down listening and listening to the speaker. Oh, my wife just like uh, ill-bonizing me. And she said, oh, please check the car. Maybe some of the kids are uh, scratching the car. You know what? Creation gets our attention of going to our loving and powerful creator, my friend. Many, many stories, you know, many things that will get our attention of our loving God. If we just understand, my friend, if we just like uh, hold the truth, and if we just really like uh, get the point of this creation that God has given us, it will lead to worship our powerful creator. It will lead the worship of our loving God. When we had our first son, Dre, he was really beautiful and adorable. We were really excited and blessed. Wow, all our time was there. Well, sometimes we forgot to have our worship. We forgot that God is the one who gave Dre to us. He was the one who blessed us, my friend. But our focus was there instead of the one who gave Dre to us. I know you, my friend, are like me. We are the same. The things that God has given us, His creation, instead of uh, directing us to Him, we are directed and focusing the creation that God has given us. It's sad to know, my friend. It's really painful if, if we were diverted of this kind of thoughts. According to David in Psalms 33, 8, 9, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people fear. It means we need to be what? We need to be in awe and be grateful to our Creator, my friend. First one, the accounts of creation reminds us that God is a powerful Creator. The next one, the second one, In the accounts of creation, God is reminding you and me that He is a God of order. When I look at the creation account, I can say that, oh, even in just like an hour, I can make everything. I can say, oh, there will be light, there will be darkness, there will be water, there will be land, herbs and plants and everything. But why is it that God made it day by day And in the very different, he can make it in an hour. But why is it that it's in a seven-day week cycle? My friend, let's remember, God wants to let us know that he is a God of order. 
He is a God of purpose. Last 2019, I was hit by a GERD and it's really terrible. I lose weight and I don't know what to do. I went to the hospital. Hopeless, my friend. I don't know. They checked me and nothing found. But I was getting really weak and I cannot really play with my kids. I cannot uh, even uh, go to uh, gym to play basketball. Everything. So I was really down. I said, Lord, what will I do? Please, dear God, regain, help me to regain my strength. I know you have a plan for me. Even in my mother's womb, you know me. You have a purpose in my life. Please, dear Lord, help me to understand the order because you're a God of order. I know that you're a God of a purpose. You have a purpose into my life. So please help me to understand. My friend, it seems that sometimes your life is messy and you think that you don't have any purpose at all. But please remember, even in the account of creation, God is reminding you, God is reminding you and me that He is a God of order and He has a purpose why you exist here on earth. It's not like a coincidence like other says. Oh, it's a coincidence that I'm here. No, my friend. You're here because our loving God has a purpose in your life. 1 Corinthians 4, 33, it says that for God is not the author of confusion. You're confused. Oh, what will I do? Why I'm here? Why, why it happens to my life, Lord? It's not the work of the Lord because God is a God of order. But He is a God of peace in all churches and all of the saints. My friend, if you come to a point that you're hopeless, your life is so messy, you don't understand what's going on, remember the account of creation that God is reminding you that He is a God of order and He has a purpose of your life. The first one, God said that He, there is a powerful creator. The second one, God is a God of order. And the third one, the last one in the account of creation, there is a God that provides. God, God of provision. After creating everything, in verse 29, if you can follow with me, if you have your Bible with you, God gave food to Adam and Eve. Not only Adam and Eve, he gave food to even to the animals and everything that living creatures, he has given food. He said, oh, there will be what? Fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts. Oh, chicken was not mentioned that time, my friend. The fried chicken in a uh, uh, food chain that is really... Uh, Smelly when you uh, smells good when you pass that way. When you pass the intersection, you can smell the the what is that? The the smell that will invite you to it. No, God didn't give that food. Let's remember the one, my friend. God has given what? Fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts for you and me. That's the food that God has given to us. But I would like to point some other things. Of this my friend you know what when i was young uh my grandparents on friday because we're cooking uh using uh firewoods so on friday they cook their food for dinner they cook their food for breakfast and they cook their food for lunch for the following day on the sabbath they will not cook anymore on the sabbath day but that time they were so stressed because no bayan. We only have rice. We don't have bayan for tomorrow. And that day, on that Sabbath, on the following day, we have visitors from other churches. So my, my grandmother was, oh, where, what will I do? What will we do? We don't have anything. So my grandfather went to the sea, to the local fisherman, but they caught nothing. So he went back home, lonely and sad. No bayan. No food for tomorrow. The sun is setting. Because we're living near uh, the coastal line. So we can see the sunset, my friend. 
they are hopeless. I remember that my grandmother grabbed the hand of my grandfather and said, let's pray. Let's whisper a prayer to our loving God. So we prayed. Lord, she said, we want to share food for our visitors tomorrow. But no resource that we can have to provide one of them. Sorry, dear Lord. After ending the prayer, there was a kapakapa sound at the door. Uh, I don't know what's that in English. But there is a, a commotion outside the door, my friend. There was a loud sound, kapakapa sound. So my grandmother said, oh, what's that sound? So we went there. My grandmother, my grandfather, all oh, they opened the door and they want to check. Nothing. But with their amazement, my friend, when they looked down, we saw our cat bringing a wild duck bigger than the cat. Bigger than the cat. When they check, there is no bruise. There is no wound in that wild duck. My grandmother grabbed it. And with a teary eye, they were amazed of the magnificent provision of our loving God. The account of creation, my friend, is telling us that God will provide all your needs. According to Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory for Christ. My friend, maybe you're uh, bombarded because we don't have, maybe your rice is gone, your food, your financial needs, everything. Just go back to the account of creation and you will be pointed that we have a powerful God who created us. God is a God of order and a God that will provide all your needs. My friend, some of you are facing struggles and problems in life. I don't know. Maybe you have uh, heart aches. Maybe you have like uh, family problems. Maybe your plans are not in accordance to your, your thinking. Maybe your work, job, financial problems, marriage. If God is concerned of the little things that He has created, God is reminding you this time that He careth you and me. He careth your burdens. I would like to quote the text that found in 1 Peter 5.17. It says that, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Yes, my friend, we have different struggles in life. We have different uh, obstacles in life. We have different dreams in life. We have different uh, goals in life. But the account of creation is pointing us back. That God who cares the little things, even the cricket, the God that who makes this thing, everything that we see, that this powerful God who created everything, heaven and the earth and everything that we see, even you and me, my friend, is caring for you. Maybe you have some questions. Maybe you have some uh, additionals of this topic. Please, we are happy and blessed to hear words from you. You can just message us. You can just PM us. Like, and you can just like uh, uh, message directly and ask us questions. And we are glad, we are blessed to respond, to answer all your queries. Let's close with a prayer. Father God in heaven, we praise you. We are so blessed this time for reminding us once again the account of creation in which where we can find that there is a God, a powerful God who created everything, even us. And there is a God of order that has a purpose in our lives and a God that will provide everything we need. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for reminding us. Help us, Lord, to have this message in our life so that 
We will be faithful. We will develop our faith unto thee till you come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Indeed, this serves as a reminder that God is a powerful creator. He is a God of order and a God of provision. Thank you for joining. We pray and hope that you have been blessed. We will meet again. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us in this beautiful, magnificent Bible study that we're doing, Point 28. And if in case you have more questions, you want to clarify things, then you can send us a message, send us an email, comment down here in this video so we can guide you in a Bible study. Once again, if you have questions, if you want to learn more, if you want to have a Bible study with us, we are more than willing, our missionaries will be ready to share a Bible study with all of you.